so I, I got to thinking about trains and with the, the engine, which is now cooled off, there's no smoke coming out today. So uh, uh, anyway, steam engine, steam power is so remarkable. Uh, some of these locomotives built in the late 30s and into the 40s developed between six and 8,000 horsepower. Six and 8,000 horsepower, steam. And, and they could pull huge, huge trains. But what we were confronted with this week is there's another power that's even stronger than that. This past week, we experienced Jesus in the middle of VBS. We had this wonderful week, and God blessed us so abundantly with his power. So today we want to touch briefly on the five lessons that we learn, and all of them revolve around Jesus' power and what it means in our lives and for our world. So each day we examine the facet of what Jesus' power can do. And the first one was Jesus' power helps us do hard things. Now, I, I don't think you have to be a kid to realize that there are hard things in our lives. Amen? I say we all face those issues. And the event that we talked about was in Acts chapter 9 when God got Saul, who later became Paul, got his attention on the road to Damascus. And he, he struck him blind and he was led on into Damascus and there he waited for a man named Ananias to come. So God speaks to Ananias and says, Ananias, I want you to go to this certain house and I want you to pray for, for Saul. Now, Saul was not, was mean to Christians. And that was kind of the way I put it for the kids. He was mean to Christians. And we'll kind of leave it at that. And, and Ananias goes, uh, what? <laughs> you want me to do what? I, I've heard of him. He says, I will go with you. And he's waiting for you. And so Ananias had a hard thing to do. He had to go talk to, pray for Saul who hated Christians. Now Saul thought he was doing God a favor, stamping out this upstart movement. But, but Ananias trusted in Jesus' power and did the hard thing and he prays for him. Saul's vision comes back. Saul becomes a Christian and, and turns into later Paul who writes two-thirds of the New Testament. Jesus gives us the strength we need to face hard things and then, and then do them. And and this is especially true, like we told the kids, when it comes to doing the right thing. Because sometimes doing the right thing runs against human nature, doesn't it? And to do the right thing, because sometimes you may get made fun of, you may even get in trouble for admitting you broke something, but doing the right thing will always lead to something good. But think about this. Think about the hard thing Jesus had to do to go to the cross. Because he did this, we can have this power from him to do the hard things in our life. You see, when we act in faith and when we obey God, God's power is at work on our behalf and for his glory. The next day we talked about Jesus' power gives us hope. We all have bad things happen to us. I mean, our prayer list, often there are more uh, concerns than there are joys, aren't there? So how do we handle them? Well, on lesson two, uh, on, on day two, our lesson was about Paul being shipwrecked. Paul, who was strong for the faith, was arrested by the Jews for creating uh, uh, problems, and he was headed to Rome to stand trial. And a storm came up on this ship, and, and God spoke to Paul and said, you're all going to make it. You will make it through this. Now, God didn't steal the storm. In fact, the boat wrecked and sank, but they all made it to shore. They all made it to shore. God promised them that no one would perish. They all ended up safely on shore. Now, I also told them a week ago yesterday, some of us will remember this little incident in our edition, an inch of water. Now, when Chad called me Saturday, we were preparing to have Father's Day because everybody's going to be busy on Sunday, and just I just kind of settled my brain to really celebrating. <laughs> and yet, God called us to spring into action, 
And we had hope that our actions would lead to something. God dried it up. It is bone dry over there. So we can, we can thank God for that, that we have hope in the midst of our trial. And, and we all can have hope if we, if we trust Jesus. Doesn't mean we won't have problems. Paul's boat still shipwrecked, didn't it? We still had water in our new edition. We still have people getting sick. But it, but it means this. When something bad happens, we can trust God is at work to bring ultimate good on the other side of it. Romans 8, 28, God is at work in all things to bring ultimate good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. And what's his purpose? Romans 8, 29 says it's to conform us to the image of Christ. Through our trials, we are being shaped into the people of God. And God will bring good on the other side. We just need to look for it. We need to see it. We need to see the purpose be fulfilled. We need to be ready to see the good things when we're going through trials and have patience, patience that God is at work in these. Again, think about the cross. On Friday, there seemed to be no hope, but then Sunday came. The next day, we talked about Jesus' power helps us to be bold. And one of the greatest examples of this power was Jesus helping Peter. Remember when Jesus was arrested, Peter followed, and when, they, when he was confronted by, you know him, you were with him. No, not me. I don't know that guy. Three times he denied Jesus. Easter morning, they were, they were still scared to death. They were locked up in a room. But on the day of Pentecost, 50 days later, Peter was standing up boldly, proclaiming Jesus, and even telling the people, you are responsible for his death. 3,000 people came to know Jesus that day. The event that we talked about was when Peter and John in Acts chapter 4 went to the temple and they encountered a lame man who was sitting there begging. He never walked. And, and Peter prayed for him. And the man was, God healed the man. Created quite a stir. Brought the religious leaders. They didn't like what Peter and John were proclaiming, proclaiming Jesus. They had him arrested. And, they, and, and basically, when they kind of had him on trial, um, you know, nobody, nobody dared question the religious leaders of the day. And they told them, don't speak in the name of Jesus or about Jesus anymore. And here's Peter's response. Which is right in God's eyes to listen to you or to him. You be the judge. You decide what you think you ought to do. But as for us, we cannot help sp but speak about what we've seen and heard. They were bold in the, in the face of the religious leaders of the day. The church prayed for boldness when they released Peter and John. And it said the building shook. But they, they didn't pray for, oh Lord, keep us safe. It says they prayed for more boldness. More boldness. So whether it's sharing our faith, taking a stand for the truth, or doing what's right, God's power through Jesus will give us the strength to do this. His power will help us. See, Jesus was bold for us, wasn't he, when he went to the cross. And when we see what he did for us, we will have the power from the Holy Spirit to be bold for him. If he can be bold for us, how can we not be bold for him? The next day we, we talked about Jesus' power lets us live forever. You know, we all will live forever somewhere. Everybody will live forever somewhere. Where is based upon a decision that we make. And I would say all people want to live in heaven. We want to live in paradise. Um, I think I probably counted up before I retired. I had done two, 200 funerals. And every person at, at every funeral has a vision that their loved one is in heaven. But heaven is perfect. Heaven is perfection. Only perfection will be in heaven. Now, when we sin, when we do something wrong, we all know there's a consequence for our sin. A price must be paid for our sin. So if the price is paid, we can go free. So I, I asked the kids, I said, so, so if you tell a lie, then can you tell the truth three times and that'll make up for it? No. No, right, Macy. 
or, or you know, do something, you know, we, we think there must be some atonement for the sin we, we commit. And, and the, yes, there must be. But what is it we must do? What is that thing? Is it saying a prayer? Is it, is it doing this or doing that, cleaning up the street? And how much do we have to do? When do you know you've atoned for your sin? And then the Bible says that even our good deeds are like filthy rags in God's eyes. Even the good stuff we do, God says, that's nice. Not going to make up for it. So, and then think about this. If we could make up for our sin, why did Jesus have to die on the cross? It's not Jesus plus this. It's Jesus plus nothing. Jesus atones for our sin. The Bible is clear, only, only Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, will pay for our sin. And that if we put our faith in that fact, if, if we uh, ask for forgiveness based on the cross, and we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our lives each day, then the Bible says we are saved. That when God looks at us, he sees perfection because he's looking at us. We're behind Jesus. He's looking at us through the eyes of the cross, through the eyes of Jesus. We will live, in for, we will live forever in heaven when we trust in Jesus. Jesus' rex- resurrection then shows God's power at work. What Romans 8, 11, And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. The phrase give life comes from a word that means to make that which was dead alive. That which was dead is alive. So so the power that raised Jesus from the dead comes into our lives, makes us alive. So Jesus' power helps us live forever. And finally, on the last day, we said Jesus' power helps us be good friends. You see, once we accept Jesus as our our Savior and make him the Lord of our lives, he has a mission for us. This week, the mission for this church was Vacation Bible School, helping create new friends. Some of us met people we had never met before, and now they're our friends Our mission is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And when we do that, the kingdom grows. And what results is a group of believers that gather together that we call the church. So I ask the kids, when you hear the word church, what do you think of? And most people think of this building, don't we? I'm going to church. But who is the church? Well, the church raised its hand. It's us. Ecclesia is the Greek word that means called out ones. God called you out today to gather as a church, to worship him and learn more about his love for us. But it even goes deeper than that. It extends into our relationships. Jesus' power helps us be good friends. Remember the parable of the Good Samaritan. The, the lawyer thought he would trip Jesus up and, and in turn, Jesus spins it on him and asks, okay, this poor guy who was beaten and robbed, because the guy said, well, who is my neighbor? Who do I have to love? Surely there's a limit. And Jesus spins it on him and says, okay, he didn't say who is your neighbor, who was the neighbor? Who was the neighbor to this poor guy? And so... He had to say, the one who showed mercy. So Jesus' power helps us be good friends to other people, to put others first. Now again, that, that's kind of hard for, for us to do because Jesus said, love others as I've loved you. And how did Jesus love us? He died on the cross, didn't he? So what kind of things are we called to die to? Well, maybe it's pride, maybe it's whatever, but maybe it's, our desire to do what we want to do, our desire to be first, and we think of others. Agape love, thinking of others. So when we think of how Jesus loved us on the cross, how can we not? 
Because you see, there, there has to be this transformation that takes place. Because just on our own, we're pretty selfish, aren't we? we? We think of ourselves. But when Jesus was on the cross, he thought of each of us. And if he did that for us, went through all that for us, how can we not treat others with love and respect? So, you know, as we think about these five lessons, what is the overall theme? And, and what, I, what I want to sum up with were these two verses out of our theme song. Um, we trust, we trust in you, Jesus. We trust Jesus. That's, that's kind of the whole thing. Your, your power will pull us through. Because when our strength is gone, his strength is made perfect in us. We live in faith that all these promises are true. There's a song that's written by uh, Keith and Kristen Getty that I watched, uh, saw on YouTube one day. And it just, the, this phrase right here just ha has stuck with me too. By faith our fathers roamed the earth with the power of his promise in their hearts. What, what led the early church to do these things in the face of persecution and trial? The power of his promise. The power of his promise in our hearts. See, th this is the life of a follower of Jesus, living in the faith that his promises are true and that he will work in our lives when we trust Jesus. So how do we sum up Vacation Bible School 2021? We can face any situation with boldness because of Jesus' power and his promises. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the lessons that we learned this week, and, and many of them we knew, but you you shaped them in a new way. You shaped them in a way that... that, that even we as big kids could understand. So, so help us to know that we can face any situation with boldness because of Jesus' power and his promises. We pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.